I wish I could take that photo. I love that photograph. But in order for me to take that photo, I would have had to be in Alabama with a camera when I was three years old. And I didn't do that at the age of three. So, but isn't that a great photo? I'm assuming you all know who Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is. But if you don't, that photo tells you two great things about him. You can see that there's a microphone there, so he's speaking to a group of people. And secondly, you can see when this guy spoke, he had passion. He didn't just read blah, blah, blah from a speech. This guy told you how he was feeling. And you, I still remember as a kid um, seeing him on the news. And you could actually feel the emotion from this guy when he spoke. So uh, I just want to tell you a little bit about him today. Uh, first of all, born in 1929 in Atlanta, Georgia, died at the age of 39 in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, he was assassinated. It was such a turbulent time in the 60s in the United States, right? Some wonderful things happened in the 60s, the summer of love in 1967. But also, you know, they used the two Kennedy brothers and this guy to some freaks. Anyways, married, had four children. Uh, and do you folks know what his main job was? What did this guy do? He was the leader of the civil rights movement. These were people who fought inequality. They wanted people of different races and religions to be treated equally. And uh, he was their leader. And he believed in doing it using non-violent civil disobedience. The same way that Mahatma Gandhi got his message across a few decades earlier. Uh, 1964 was a big year in his life, because in 1964, the United States government did pass a Civil Rights Act uh, that said everybody should be treated equally. And the Nobel Prize Committee thought it would be appropriate to give him a Nobel Peace Prize that year, which I, I think was great, too. So uh, 1964 is an important year. You'll see why, how this is uh, treated a little bit later. So why am I talking about him today? Well, number one, today, if you were a student in the United States, you'd be sleeping right now because today's Martin Luther King Day in the United States. It was his birthday on the 15th. The first Monday after his birthday is always Martin Luther King Day. So your US counterparts are sleeping right now while you're here. Uh, and the second reason, let's go to the next slide, please. Uh, the next reason I wanted to tell you about him is because of this. This is the National Memorial to Martin Luther King. And uh, last November, I got to go to Washington, D.C. with the DECA group. That was a fun little trip. And one night, we all got into buses, and we visited a bunch of monuments in Washington. And this was one of them. I, uh, I wish you could see a nighttime photo of this. It's, it's kind of more striking at nighttime. And I want to tell you about this monument, among all the others that we visited that night, because for some reason, when I got to this one, I was moved. I don't know what it is. I can't put it into words, but something about being there was really special. The last time I felt that was when I was in Hyde Park in London, England, and I visited the Diana Princess of Wales Memorial Fountain. You'd think that would be no big deal, right? It's just a fountain with water. But something about being there in that moment was moving. And so I felt that again here, and I just want to share it with you. So this is a national monument. If you want to build a monument in Washington, the government tends not to pay for this. You've got to raise the money yourself. So take a guess in your head. Who do you think raised the money to build this? And the answer is Martin Luther King's fraternity. So when he went to university, he became a member of a fraternity. And in the 1980s, a couple of decades after he passed away, they decided to raise money to build a monument in his honor. Guess how much money you've got to raise to build one of these? So design, plan, build, maintain. $120 million. Yeah, it's quite something, isn't it? And I think the person who designed it was very thoughtful. I don't think it's the most beautiful monument I've ever seen, but I think it's very thoughtful. So let me just walk, let me just walk you through a couple of things that make it thoughtful. So apparently one of the lines that Martin Luther King used a lot in his speeches was, uh, out of the mountain of despair, a stone of hope. He said, you know, getting everybody to treat everybody equally is a daunting task, because there are people who tend not to do that. So he thought of it like a mountain of despair, but he fought for equal rights because he felt it was hope in humanity, that we would someday come to be enlightened and uh, treat each other equally. So if you can see, the art the designer said, let's build a mountain that could be like the mountain of despair. Then we'll take the middle section out, that would be the rock of hope. 
and we will carve out his likeness in that rock of hope. So I thought that was really, really thoughtful. Even more symbolism. If you were looking through that gap in the mountain of despair, you would see the Lincoln Memorial. So if you stop and think about it, President Lincoln is the guy who freed the slaves. That's definitely something that Martin Luther King believed in. So to have him on one side of it is quite great. And if you can see Martin Luther King's body, he's facing another memorial, and it's the Thomas Jefferson Memorial. Thomas Jefferson is one of the founding fathers of the United States, and he wrote, he's the principal author of the Declaration of Independence, and in that, in that statement it says, all men are created equal, so yet another thing that supports Martin Luther King's cause. But here's a nice subtle thing that I really like about it. His body is facing the Jefferson Memorial, but he's not looking at the Jefferson Memorial. His head is slightly turned to the side and he's looking away from it. Because although Jefferson said all men are created equal, he owned slaves. So I thought that that was cool that the, the designer said, well, you can, your body can be facing Jefferson, but you won't be looking at him because he's not, you know, he's talking the talk, but he's not walking the walk. So I thought that was kind of a cool design. And if you go at nighttime, which is what we did, when you walk through the mountain of despair, um, it's dark, there's no lights there. And then you come out to this area where you see Martin Luther King, it's all very well lit. So it's kind of like this moment of enlightenment. And um, last piece of symbolism is that if you look this up on a map, the address is 1964 Independence Avenue. So remember I said 1964 was a big year in his life, so I thought that was really cool. If you look at the sides of the mountains, you'll see there's a granite wall. Engraved in that granite wall are 13 quotes from Martin Luther King. And I'm not going to share all of them with you today, but I'm going to share five. And uh, I like the last one the best, just so you know this. It's my favorite one. And I won't read them to them. You, you all know how to read, so I'm going to let you read them yourselves. Can you do that first one, please? And so in this room right now, I know that there are some people who are citizens of the United States. So to you, I wish you a thoughtful and meaningful Martin Luther King Day. Uh, the fact that you're at school today and not having a day off and sleeping in, I think Martin Luther King would be happy for that. Because I think he believed that education was a key to, you know, to equality. And to all of us, have a great day. I, sh I did this with you folks today because I think beautiful things should be shared. And so that's why I chose to share this with you today, and thank you for sharing your time with me, and have a great day.